This morning, I'm going to be talking about the secrets of the universe. And when I was a kid, I would see advertisements in certain magazines that would say, learn the secrets of the universe. And I remember wondering at the time, I wonder what the secrets of the universe are. Well, in time, I found answers that satisfied me. I found them in the teachings of Jesus. I found them in the teachings of divine science. And I've also found further support for my beliefs in other teachings, in other teachers, in, uh, for instance, modern physics. And I've also found corroboration for my beliefs in the experiences of those who've had near-death experiences. Now, <clears throat> uh, lately, I've been reading a book, and I'm, I'm sorry I forgot to bring it along, a book uh, entitled The Wonder of You by Lynn Russell. It is about near-death experience. The subtitle, in fact, is What the Near-Death Experience Tells You About Yourself. Uh, Lynn Russell was raised in a home that had no religion in it whatsoever, so she felt perfect freedom to look around and sort of sample, taste other, other faiths. Uh, she said she seemed to have been born with a curiosity gene because she delved deeply into various branches of Christianity. She explored Judaism and Islam. She explored Buddhism and so forth. And uh, that, that was one of her main interests when she was a teenager. Uh, she married. She had three children. And uh, then there was a divorce. And in a short period of time after the divorce, Lynn experienced some totally unexpected spiritual experiences. During some quiet times in her home when the children were either out of the house or one of them or two of them were, and the baby was asleep, uh, what she was doing just mundane things like washing the lunch dishes or um, washing some spots off the wall, picking up the children's toys, she had these revelations, and they changed her life. They changed her life. She experienced everything, everything as being one, connected inseparably from everything else. Everything was in its proper place. Everything was just as it should be. Now, everything shared, she experienced, one life. There was one life in everything. And during these spiritual experiences, she knew that all created things, from the elements in, in an atom to, to the Milky Way, everything had consciousness, was independently conscious. Now, there was a perfect plan, there was a rhythm, there was an order, there was an intelligence behind everything. And this information just filled her with delight. It filled her with a sense of contentment because she understood. She understood the oneness. And interestingly enough, that sense of oneness is what changed Ed Mitchell so much when he came back from the moon and had this spiritual experience, changed his life the oneness of everything. There was a perfect plan in everything. There was an inner knowing of her, uh, within her, I should say, that was so powerful that it could not be denied. It flooded her. It filled her, this knowing. It said, your being is intricately connected with the operation of the universe. She was connected with the, the universe? And, and that, that idea kind of frightened her. The rest filled her with joy, but that kind of frightened her. A few more days passed before she had her final insight. And in this insight, she couldn't see anything, but she felt a presence in a room with her. She felt completely connected to this invisible presence, and she was engulfed with its feeling of love. 
of unconditional love and peace and such joy that she could hardly contain herself. And this time she didn't just know, she clearly heard the words in her ear. This is where you came from and this is where you will return. She came from love and peace and joy. She came from God. And one day she would return to the full ongoing experience of that again. She stayed in that, that state of bliss and, and serenity for months after that. Nothing bothered the children, making a lot of noise, you know, little things going wrong here and there. Nothing, nothing fazed her. It was just, just a sense of, of ongoing bliss. Her fear of death disappeared completely. And she had a, she had a healing. She had been a serious nail biter all her life. And nails were all the way down to the quick. And when they, she couldn't get any more nails to nibble on, she, she'd nibble on the, the flesh around the nail until it bled. But after these experiences, she looked down one day and she had nails. She never realized that she had stopped biting her nails. She hadn't even noticed that that had happened. Now, does that sound just a teeny bit familiar? Spiritual revelation followed by a healing? (laughs) That's what Melinda Kramer, our, our founder, experienced. Fabulous spiritual experience followed by a healing. But in a nutshell, what did Lynn Russell experience? she realized oneness, the oneness of everything. Everything is connected to everything else, and everything is important. Everything is indispensable. You are indispensable right where you are. Everything has consciousness. Why not? God is everywhere. God is consciousness. Why shouldn't everything have consciousness within it? There is intelligence, there is order, there is a plan within and behind all things. Everyone is loved unconditionally. And inner joy, bliss, peace, all knowledge is the truth within every one, is soul truth. Now this is what we teach in divine science, except we call it something different. We call it omnipresence. And then we start defining omnipresence. We call it omniscience. We call it omnipotence. We call it divine mind in action. We call it the activity of grace and love, unconditional love, everywhere. These are some of the secrets of the universe. Later on, Lynn Russell became an assistant and researcher for Dr. Jeff Long, who wrote a book on near-death experiences. And I don't know whether it was during her research for him or on her own. She read 2,500 reports from individuals who had near-death experiences and the messages they brought back. And she became a well-known expert in NDEs and, and based this book that I've been reading, The Wonder of You, on these reports and messages. And each chapter has various reports of what people experienced in their near-death experience. And one of the first chapters in the book, the one that really intrigued me, was a chapter on those who had had a, a life review. You know, my life flashed before my eyes. I got so scared. That, that's a pretty famous expression. But these people did have a life review. Now, not everybody did, no. But what was reported about the life review was that nobody was judged and nobody was punished for their mistakes. Instead, the individual was embraced with an intense feeling of unconditional love and acceptance. Now, the main purpose 
of the Life Review was to help in the growth and understanding of the soul. When their actions were motivated by love, by kindness, by an effort to help other people, what they felt was such deep joy and satisfaction. But when actions were unkind or angry, when they were vengeful or egotistical or, or selfish, they had a feeling of pain and sorrow that were as intense as the person or persons they had wronged. As intense. Then they were asked what they had learned from the life review. That was the question. And Lynn Russell said that it was through the realizations brought forth from the answer to this question that the soul grew. No matter whether their, their actions were positive or negative, everyone, without exception, reported that they were their own judge and jury. There was like a part of their soul that looked at all this and uh, did the, the judging, the appraising. And the other part relived every single moment of their life from the beginning to the end. Not only did they feel all the pain or the sorrow or the relief, the joy, the uplift, the, the pleasure that they gave other people that they had dealt with, they also felt the consequences of their behavior that uh, people subsequently who were touched by the individual whom they had helped or hurt. Now, for example, the men who flew their planes into the Twin Towers on 9-11 not only felt the pain of the people who died there, but of all the people, the people who surrounded them, their families, their friends, people around the, in the, that city, in the, our country, around the world, who felt shock and horror and, and anguish and sadness and pain. They felt all of this. And it could have been carried on and probably will be for generations who were affected in turn by those who died or were injured in 9-11. Mm. But on the other hand, can you imagine what Jesus Christ must have experienced? Because he gave of nothing but love and understanding and peace and joy to the people around him powerful, important, central teachings of how to live life, how to relate to God, how that has gone on and on and on and on and on. Can you imagine the joy he must experience from that? But throughout this life review, whether it was negative or whether it was positive, these souls, these individuals who experienced near death, felt the unconditional love of God, the acceptance of God nonetheless. What have you learned? The, in, the universe is not interested in punishment. It is not interested in revenge, getting even. Nah. It is only interested in what we have learned and if we are determined to do better. That's it. Believe me when I say that the Life Review had profound effects on all the people who experienced it. They returned this to this world, vastly changed in their attitude about what was important in life. It was the soul's goals, not the ego, not the personality's goals. It was the soul's and what the soul determined. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, this is such valuable information. Gives me a clearer, clearer picture of why I should do the things I try to do and why I should try to avoid some of the things I try to avoid. Perhaps someone hurt you deeply in some way and you thought they just went sailing off into the Wide blue yonder, never got touched by this, got away with it scot-free. They didn't. They did not. The time will come when they will feel all the pain that you experienced. 
the time will come when you will understand also the whys of their behavior. Like we sow, we reap. That same truth applies to everybody. Everybody. But think of the blessings and the beauty and the good that you will feel again for every kind thing you've said or done for anybody. Every soul will experience, no doubt, at least I think so, will experience this scorecard, this life review, what we have learned and what we have yet to learn. Now, with this information in mind, it becomes all the more important that every day in every way we bring to every person and to every task, every goal, the very best we can in the way of effort and kindness and honor and peace and love. We continue to make the effort to behold the Christ that is, look for the good when, within every person. Look for that child of God nature which is there beneath the surface. God's very presence, because God is everywhere. God's very presence in everyone. And we, we try to do this whether their behavior is pleasant or unpleasant. That's, that's our goal. But there are times. There are times when we are faced with something that's so abrupt, so, so shocking, so different. Different, frightening maybe, humiliating, dangerous, expensive, who knows what. But it's bad, it, and it's just way over the top, and uh, we are just taken, taken aback by it, that we just, we're caught up in it mentally. We're caught up in it. We find ourselves worried or angry or feeling fearful perhaps, uh, and it keeps going on. And in the middle of the night when we should be asleep, here we are grinding around about what she said, what he did, what they and what maybe what they think and what's going to happen because of that. And we keep on keeping on with this what is known as the broken record syndrome. Yeah. The broken record syndrome is getting mentally stuck going over and over and over the same problem. Now, no doubt we might try to use the golden key. Think about God rather than the problem. Keep it. But then it isn't working for something to keep going back to the problem. What then? What do you do then? I want you to remember this, everyone. The way to get something out of your mind is to write it down. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Write it down. Never allow your inner world to be hijacked, taken over by the broken record syndrome. Write it down. Every feeling, all the events, everything they said and you said, everything you felt, everything you like them, you know, to happen to them for doing that mean, terrible thing. Put it all down. And as you put it all down, all of a sudden, you are released from a tremendous mental burden. All of a sudden, you feel lighter. You read what you've written, maybe the same day or a few days later, and you become a little bit more objective about the situation. You look at it a little more clearly. Then you can remember the golden key. Then you can put God in place of the problem. You remember not to take the other person's behavior personally, but know that it has a great deal more to do with their own inner dynamics, what's happening in them and their lives, than it has to do with you. Remember that. You can begin to use the spiritual tools that you know, forgiveness, understanding, peace, patience, looking behind the surface appearance and seeing within that individual a child of God, God's perfect, beloved child who has gone off the deep end somewhere, somehow. You write down what is bothering you. You ask God's help for forgiveness and understanding and peace and a solution to this problem, and you get it. Write it down. 
Above all, above all, everybody has more work to do in loving others unconditionally. Everybody. That's the way God loves. That's the way your soul loves. That's what Jesus insisted that we should do. Love God with every part of your being, to the depths of your being, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what he said. He said, love one another as I have loved you. And he loved them unconditionally. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you. And then First John said some beautiful things. He said, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Express love, especially unconditional love, because it is the most important thing we can do, along with kindness, helpfulness, patience, integrity, doing good. Now, there are no doubt many, many people who just think that near-death experiences are very sick people having hallucinations. But to me, they have the ring of truth. They described exactly how I believe a God of love would structure things, how he would set things up. He would never judge. We judge ourselves. He is everywhere. Good is everywhere. Love is everywhere. But in any event, in my opinion, the center, singular importance of expressing unconditional love to yourself first and then to everybody else is the greatest secret in the universe.